History of the Periodic Table Theories in science change as new information is discovered. Consider the change in atomic theory as we move from Dalton's model of the solid sphere to Thomson's model, the plum pudding, to Rutherford's nuclear atom, to Bohr's energy level atom, to Chadwick's addition of the neutron, to the modern electron cloud theory. As new information is discovered, uh, theories can change. We see something similar with the periodic table. First is Dobrinder's classification of elements into sets of three called triads. He classified these by similar chemical properties like atomic mass or density, with the middle atom being the average of the first and the last element. John Newlands arranged elements that were known in the time in order of increasing atomic mass. He noticed that the properties of the eighth elements were like that of the first element. So lithium's properties were similar to hydrogen's and called this the law of octaves, the repeating pattern of every eighth element. This eventually highlighted the, conce the concept of periodicity, meaning that periodically we're going to see a repeating of elements. Dmitry Mendeleev had a very strange history. You see, he came from Siberia, the backwash of the Tsarist Empire, and he was the last of 17 children. And as a consequence, his family lived in total poverty. In fact, his father went blind and eventually died, leaving his family in, in tremendous poverty. And then his mother, in one of the great stories of self-sacrifice, his mother basically gave up her life to make sure that her youngest son had an education. His mother uprooted the entire family and took him to St. Petersburg, where she tried to persuade local universities to take him and train him. Well, of course they said no. He's from Siberia, the backwash. And yet, just before she died, she was finally able to get her son into one of the academies that then launched his great scientific career. As a young man, Mendeleev became famous for his quick mind and quick temper. He was impatient and very argumentative. He was very driven. He was very determined to do what he set out to do. He was very stubborn. He also became rather eccentric. He grew a long beard and hardly ever cut his hair, but he was totally dedicated to his work. Mendeleev knew everything that was to be known about the 63 elements then discovered, and he was determined to find out about their relationship with one another. And when Dmitry Mendeleev made up his mind to do something, he didn't give up until he was fit to drop. Though he was a very impatient man, he used to calm himself down by playing patience. The aim of the game is to sort all the cards into the right order and the right suits, which was not so very different from what he was trying to do with the elements. Mendeleev took a sheaf of blank cards and wrote down the names of all the 63 known elements together with their atomic weights. He began puzzling over his cards, trying to see if he could place them in groups. But try as he might, he could not find a pattern. He was due to leave on a long journey. But he told his driver to wait. He puzzled over his cards a few hours longer. He sent his driver away. Shuffling the cards around the table, he felt sure that he was on the brink of a breakthrough. But after hours of struggle, exhausted, he fell asleep. He began to dream. And as he dreamt, the picture started to become clear. He awoke with a start and arranged the cards in the pattern of his dream. As a result of his extraordinary dream, Mendeleev cracked the problem. And this is what he came up with. 
a table with all the 63 elements he knew about, all laid out in one big array. What he'd basically done was to put them in order of increasing atomic weight, going across here and then across here and so on. But he'd also managed to get all the families together. Look here, the alkali metals, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium. These are the ones that react so violently with water. Then the alkaline earths, beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium. And over on the other side, the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. He was so sure that he'd got it right that he also made a really important discovery. Just look, look at these gaps. 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 gaps where elements should have been but none existed so he made a prediction he said and he had the daring to say that perhaps these are the elements we should look for there were several gaps there was one between aluminium and indium another between silicon and tin scientists aren't usually hailed as geniuses when there are holes or, or question marks in our work but in this case those holes were crucial those holes were the things that everyone else had failed to spot because they signified the positions of elements that hadn't yet been discovered. So Mendeley have arranged elements in terms of their increasing atomic weights and put elements that had similar chemical properties in the same column. This required Mendeleev to switch some of the orders of the elements and suggested that some of their atomic masses had to be recalculated. He also skipped spaces and left, and left spaces to keep elements that had similar properties in line. By doing this, Mendeleev was able to predict new elements and their properties that would eventually fill in those gaps. One of the ways that Mendeleev's table was proven to be correct, was helped proven to be correct, is that as new elements were discovered, they fit with the predicted properties that Mendeleev suggested. Henry Moseley, in 1914, arranged elements according to their increasing atomic number. Some of the problems in Mendeleev's table disappeared when we moved to increasing atomic number. As new elements were beginning to be discovered, the periodic table was taking on an interesting shape, as you see above. This is until Glenn Seaborg who himself discovered several new elements, rearranged the periodic table by taking these two groups out of the main body of the table and started a new series of elements below. <laughs> 